Rarity sure is an underserved character in this show. It has 105 episodes and she only has 6 that she can call her own. And like 4 she gets partial credit on for sharing the spotlight. But all of her episodes except for 1 deal with the plights of being a creative individual in a world that resembles Earth far more closely than you'd expect a place called Equestria to. Whether it be your so-called friends judging you harshly for something you made them as a gift, or having to choose between what's right for your career and what's right for your so-called friends. But none ring more true than this one. There has never been an episode of My Little Pony as frightening as this one. And I'm not talking about sca- ah. I'm talking about true, deep, striking- Oh god, take it away! True, deep, striking horror. Much like the story of Bioware. Except this story has a happy ending. Oh crap, I just spoiled the whole thing. I'm a failure at this. In a callback to one of my top 10 favorite episodes of this show, Rarity uses her earnings to open a franchise branch of her store in Canterlot, just like she always wanted. Her dreams are coming true, but unfortunately she hired this bitch to run her new branch. And her cutie mark is tastefully obscure throughout the whole episode because I could imagine it would be hard for them to come up with a family-friendly image to represent pure, unadulterated evil. My marketing research! Yes, she is a marketing executive who has experience driving talented, passionate entrepreneurs to bankruptcy, artistic bankruptcy, and implied suicide by taking their raw, unfettered creativity and watering it down to the point where it's palatable to the unthinking, unfeeling masses and ripe for consumption. I think the rain in stain is too difficult to explain. The princess dress! And once consumption has begun, she further breaks the passionate individual's artistic integrity by making them strip down their creative process to something that can be easily recreated by an assembly line. All for the promise of monetary success. Thus completely removing the artist from the art, resulting in products. Yes, Sassy Saddles is truly the most horrendous antagonist My Little Pony has ever graced us with the presence of. And the best part about this whole thing is that the problem isn't solved by some strategic application of friendship. It's solved by Rarity flipping her shit. I don't want to make another hundred princess dresses! She hits rock bottom, says ah! and climbs back out. This is not your boutique! And if this is what success in Canterlot looks like, I want no part of it! She would rather burn this shit to the ground than become the thing she loathes. I'm closing Canterlot Carousel! And in the end, the flickering lights from the flames of passion burning the bridge to mediocrity was enough to wake these ponies up. Plus, it delivers the hopeful message that if you take risks and expose people to something other than the same old repackaged slop they're used to, they will subscribe to it. I mean... Ponies. I mean, if you... if... You expose ponies to something other than the same old repackaged slop they're used to. They'll pay money, or they'll pay bits, to wear the dresses you make for them. And this really represents the core of Rarity's character, and probably why she doesn't get so many episodes to herself. Because she's always working. So it is for success. She's working on a dress. Dog and Pony Show. She's working on dresses. Stairmaster. She's ignoring her sister to work on dresses. Green isn't your color. She is trying to get recognition for how hard she works on her dresses. Rarity takes Manhattan, again, trying to get recognition for how hard she works on her dresses. In Inspiration Manifestation, she is getting aid from dark magic so that she can work on more dresses faster. And now in Season 5, she's finally getting somewhere. Her hard work and persistence and discipline finally paid off. It's almost exactly like what that one lady wanted. I mean, season 4 was like everything wrong with the show. But season 5 is like everything good and sweet and right with the show. I mean, seriously, different characters with different definitions of success and rates of development based on their own personalities and individual goals? What the fuck am I watching? This is the episode you frantically point to making incoherent noises whenever somebody makes fun of you for watching a 